Welcome to my video on the new season 14. All of the new changes are coming out on the PVE. There's lots of new things to talk about. How is it going to affect Tarek? How is it going to affect Tarek jungle, Tarek support? All that I'm going into as fast as I can in this video. I'm going to keep it nice and brief. Of course, we got, you know, I've gone ahead. I've updated the mobile fire guide. It's all, you know, fleshed out for the current season. You know, I have went into the spreadsheet as well. The spreadsheet is now completely done for this season. I don't think this at all for the rest of the season and now i have the season 14 changes right these new ch these new items the new changes of course with all of the jungle things we're just going to get into everything um if you haven't seen it go go look at this it's all over the things there's tons of different changes i'm going to say this assuming that you know all of this stuff already so let's just get right into it so the season 14 changes that affect Tark in the jungle so they've added these new grub things spawn in the herald pit at five minutes um, now that there are more objectives to clear and lanes have, you know, there are different wall changes that makes lanes effectively harder to gank, this incentivizes junglers to clear more and gank less. Because you want to clear more and gank less, this means that we need to spec into more clear style items rather than more teamfight style items um, as well. So Shirelias, you know, is an item that they are changing slightly. They are removing the passive on Shirelias. That is why... We build it on Tarek in the current state in season 13 because it has a passive that gives us movement speed anytime we heal or shield an enemy every four seconds. It's now only the active, which means that we only get movement speed every 75 seconds on an active. That is not the same thing. It's not the same item. Don't get baited into going Shirelias anymore. If they change it like this, it's basically dead to us other than maybe support or some other reasons to build it. But we're never going to build it first item anymore because we need constant movement speed, not conditional one time. So these grubs appear and they appear at five minutes so i found in my games on the pbe that if you full clear the jungle you actually have a chance to start those grubs before even backing a single time this makes that phase rush rune page where you have water walking really effective because you actually just sneak the uh the grubs on spawn at five minutes and make sure that you get at least you know one or two of them so that the enemy will never you know pick up that um that buff later on so um then there's even more blue buffs right there's you know, buffs later on give blue buffs to the entire team of anyone that's alive. More blue blue buffs in the game means that Tarek has less mana problems. This lack of mana problems means we don't need tier ever, like ever. You never need tier. I've been building Wits End, and I'll get into why um, later on. And I'm still not requiring mana whatsoever. So even you know, even Tarek support should consider going Rod of Ages into other items because we Mythics there are no longer Mythic system. Um, and I'm going to get into why later as well. Basically, tier is worthless. There are other ways to either in the jungle, doesn't need mana, in the support lane, you know, don't pick up tier, it's not worth it. Um, so let's just go into it. So we must look for items that clear well, give good early survivability, as well as transition into full builds that have all the things Tarek wants later on. So, itemization problems. Tarek in the jungle requires a vast amount of stats to be effective as a jungler. They include, but are not limited to, all these things. First of all, you need clear speed to clear the jungle. You need attack speed and armor, ability haste, etc. DPS. You need to clear the jungle. Um, survivability, right? Attack speed increases your survivability because you heal faster. Armor, of course, health resist, which also affect clear speed. Your movement speed affects how fast you clear as well. Tenacity, um, healing power, also great for team fighting. Um, just note that mana and AD are effective, you know, tools for those things, but not for different reasons, not always required. So. The current most viable looking Tarek Rush items is Wit's End. And the reason is that item gives now 50% attack speed instead of 40%. So Tarek's passive doubles attack speed. And since it doubles attack speed, it has 100% attack speed instead of, you know, 80. And that's just the, the amount of survivability and clear speed that you get from Wit's End is crazy. It gives tenacity, no AD. So Tarek doesn't have any AD ratios, so AD isn't wanted, but it gives tenacity. Because it gives tenacity and is cheaper, now we can skip Merc Treads. Previously, we've been forced into, you know, building Merc Treads, building Merc Treads whenever they're CC and the enemy team, they're CC, whatever. Now that Witsend gives tenacity, we can just pick up Lucidity Boots for even cheaper than before. They're 50 gold cheaper now. And they give you the haste that this build I'm about to craft lacks. And because it lacks the, um, the haste, the Lucidity Boot pickup is not only cheap, it's very effective because it grabs us the haste that we lack in this build because Wits doesn't have any haste, as well as Wits does not have any HP. So, um, oh. note that Wits End actually only, you know, it doesn't give any health, right? It doesn't give any health, it doesn't give any haste, 
and you know it doesn't give any armor so we got to find an item that has those things in our very next item or even better um note that wit's end starts to scale at level nine before then it only has a flat amount of on hit damage so if you somehow are really fed and you finish wits before level nine it's actually bad because the item hasn't started to scale yet um so we could if you were really fed go one of these three armor items first death stance is also here because it's also a viable option but basically you want one of these items because it has a on hit slow armor haste and all these things right no to only only ever go one of these three because you need to have only one on hit slow because slows do not stack it only takes the strongest stack this applies to all the game. um you should rush just you should get one of them and then that's all right so this trailblazer item is really really strong it has in it what we got out of old shrelias other than the fact that you have to be standing on the path um it gives us much better stats and is a lot closer to the idea of the current version of shrelias that we use um of course dead man's has its own reasons and iceborne has its own reasons um and same thing with dust dance they all you know we're basically going to pair one of these with wits um, going with Dust Dance is pretty risky because it has no HP, but the rest of these three items are all very, very good for their own reasons. So there's another option of you can just go Rod first, right? Go Rod of Ages. Um, it fixes any mana problems that you don't have. You honestly don't have mana problems, so it's kind of hard to say if you actually want this. But you could hypothetically delay your wits past level nine um, by going Rod first, which fixes your health problems and any mana problems that you could potentially have. Um, and then Wits End would finish it off, right? Of course, you're lacking that haste still, so you still would pick up Lucilies, but then, of course, you're going to pick up any armor item you desire. So you rush Rod first, because it's Rod, and then you would go Wits into one of the three armor items. Obviously, that leaves you pretty low on armor early, so you'd want to build like that if they are heavier e or, you know, heavier scaling or something. And now, note, I think that Tarek support should rush Rod. It is just such an effective item and compared to like trying to build tier items, now we can go you can go rod locket, you could go rod val, you could go rod any support item normally um, with it. And um, I'll get into Helia later because there's actually a good reason to build Helia now. Um, but for for now, we'll be like we'll just we'll skip over that. So you know you could be like, wait a second, Light Rocket, you are you're crazy, you're a crazy man. If you're talking about clearing. Why don't you just go Bammies? Bammies is, you know, Bammies is the tank clearing item. Why don't you just go Bammies? It's so obvious that you just go Bammies. And I'm not saying don't go Bammies. I'm saying that this Wits End version is more viable than Bammies. Why? So, Bammies, as well as this new Magic Resist style Sunfire item, give AoE burn damage, right? And this one is Magic Resist now, which is pretty cool. Um, the truth is, is that Tarek does have an HP ratio on Q. Right? He has a health scaling, but he does. Tark does not have inherent HP in his kit, such as Cho'Gath or Scion or you know champions that actually get HP for free from their champion. These items are heavily balanced around those champions, right? Like Scion or whatever building them. So whenever you pick up a Sunfire on Tarik, you have this HP ratio on the Sunfire, and it means that hey, you want to start picking up nothing but health, nothing but health. Here's you know get more health, get more health. But the truth of it is, there's a lot of other stats Tarek needs than just health, right? I, I've, obviously, I went through that above. So, items like Titanic, items like the new Riftmaker that also has Old Demonic's passive on it, um, have these HP ratios, and realistically speaking, Tarek does not actually get enough HP to make those effective. He needs more resist. He's, an, he's a resist champion, not a health champion. He needs health. It's not like he doesn't need health. Of course he needs health, but you don't want items that scale off of health. Um, because there's just other I, there's other champions in the game that get way more health that they're scaled around um, you. so um helia is not a mythic which is kind of interesting because if you need you need a couple of conditions and there's a reason that we didn't go helia this past season as a mythic because there's two conditions you need to meet to actually make helia a viable item one you need to have attack speed and two you need to have movement speed because not only do you need to auto fast so that your Q resets over and over again, which procs the Helia, but you also need to be autoing champions. And because you need to be autoing champions, you need the movement speed to actually engage on them and, you know, actually make it so that you are autoing champions and not just like some random ward or dragon or something. So Helia with Wits End and the uh, the Trailblazer item is actually super effective of like a, like a third or fourth item style pickup because you actually will start dishing out, you know, more damage considering that you're autoing fast and you're autoing champions. Um, so that is, you know, 
a very good option. Um, note that there's been a lot of tank shredding items like Cleaver, LDR, Leandries have been nerfed in ways that make HP and resist better, and obviously this is good for Tarek. Once again, um, don't go HP stacking just because of this is this is true, like, you know, still reasons you don't stacking um, as well, right? So both AP and AD, there's a, just a bunch of ridiculous new items and they do more damage. And like, I've been finding that even if I build magic resist, sometimes I'm not surviving. Um, but the new Jack show actually is viable as a late game pickup because it just, if we're resist stacking, if we're getting wits, which has MR, and then we're getting trailblazer, which has you know armor and then we're picking up any item that has resist you can easily go jack show forth like there's no reason to not go jack show if you have three resist items right away even if you're even if your third item is death dance it's like okay you still have that much resist you might as well pick it up um obviously still be aware of cleaver still be aware of flat true damage still be aware of those normal things but um just note that jack show is a really good late game pickup um and these are some items i haven't really went into them too much but um stride breaker looks viable force of nature gets even more mr so it even really really good with jack show um new redem that got haste back again um bork is going to be good because we're looking for that early clear speed so if you want to go bork for a reason if they're heavy hp champions instead of wits um bork is still possible and death dance rush you know is back at it again because it's you know it was always good it's not a mythic um i've gone into why the bleed is effective with tarx alt in the past it has haste it has ad it has armor um it's a great item on Tark. so Items that look viable on Tarek that aren't, and uh, you see Fimble in here, and you go, oh my god, you're sinning! Fimble is the best Tarek item ever! It's like, okay, stop, 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 just stop. Especially one in the jungle. It's not enough. Rod of Ages, Frozen Art, Fimble Winter might be tempting because you might be like, oh, if I get all of the mana scaling, Rod and the Frozen Heart and the Fimble Winter, I could have so much mana scaling and it would be so broken. But when it comes down to it, I've tried this experimental build, it's not worth it. Like, it just, it doesn't, you know, you need other types of stats that are much more important than having this weird mana scaling, especially in the jungle that you don't even require mana in the first place because of so many blue buffs. Right? There's just so many blue buffs that you just don't have mana problems ever. Um, Frozen Heart, though, I will say this, unrelated to mana, Frozen Heart is cheaper. You lost a little bit of armor, but it is cheaper and it makes it a nice pickup. Like you can potentially go a Frozen Heart in this, you know, wits end area, but of course, you know, it fixes the haste problem. It doesn't fix the health problem. Um, you know, if you're gonna pair it with wits, but also Frozen Heart looking a little bit more viable again. Um, this could, you know, go back into old um, Frozen Heart Chains style builds, um, just like Iceborne right now. Um, Shrelia's is just not viable. I've already explained why. Um, it's just not enough as an active. It could be fine for support. I think that at, in the jungle, there are just other things you're going to need to buy that give you constant movement speed, not conditional one-time use movement speed. Also, Zeke's was situa situational before. Now it's just bad. There is, you know, without flaming the development team too much, there is literally zero reason to ever build Zeke's over over Iceborne. Because one of them gives you a slow every two seconds. The other one gives you a slow every time you ult. There is a huge difference between those two. Okay? And they give nearly the same stats, and once again, you don't need it. So, just don't build Zeke's, please. Um, at least not on Tark. Right. And so there's some new items. I've been testing new items, and new items are cool. Um, let's get into ones that are not viable. Right. They're the ones that look like it could be viable, but they're not. So, uh, Dawn Core is this healing item that gives AP or it gives like healing power and based on your mana regen. Right. There's not a lot of items that Tarek actually wants that gives mana regen. Like Redem is great. Like Ardent is great. Sure. Like if you have some of these items, you could play like this backline Tarek style gameplay. But realistically, if you try for this fourth item Dawn Core build, you're griefing your build just so that you can pick up this item and you're going to get one shot like you like items like vow are great because they benefit from healing power but they don't have you know vow doesn't have healing power in it if you go like there are no healing power items that give armor in the game like it just doesn't exist so you, you this dawn core item just doesn't it's just not effective you're you are a frontline enchanter not a backline um terminus is it looks like an alternate version of Wit's End. It looks close. It's like, oh my gosh, you auto things and you get armor and resist and it also switches between light and dark. Like, that's super cool. But one, the stats are not that great. Two, the juxtaposition, this is more important, the juxtaposition passive does not work on camps. So it does, you know, damage on hit just like Wit's does, but the juxtaposition passive doesn't give you things on camps. So like, hypothetically, if you were, if it worked on camps and you know jungle minions or whatever your baron taking would be not only faster but it would be more effective because you would have 
you know, you'd have more armor while you're hitting something, which is everything Tarek wants. Like, please, look, God, just make this apply to jungle camps. I swear, just make it just apply to jungle camps. That's all we need. Um, but realistically, because it doesn't, this is just a worse version of Wits. Like, it's more expensive than Wits End. It, you know, it gives stats that we don't want. Wits gives us stats that we do want. Um, if they change the passive and apply it to jungle camps, it will be better. Um, but other than that, it's it. And also experimental hex play as in furs is very experimental. It doesn't seem, you know, it's not that viable. It's when you alt, um, you get like back speed and speed. it's like, okay. But I just personally, from a Tarek player, I think that items like Radiant, items that fully, like Zeke's now, that items that fully spec into when you alt something happens are not good for Tarek. Because in high elo, there is a lot of baiting that happens. They will have bait fights or fake engages where they will pretend to fight. And then as soon as you see your alt, if you alt ever so slightly too early, they back off and you waste everything. They bait out your alt and then they come 10 seconds later and they kill your entire team. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. As a Tarek, your alt is strong enough as is. This window where you alt is great and I love it, but you need to be useful when your alt is not up. There are huge windows of time during the game where you don't have your alt available. You need to be able to constantly, especially maybe even more so as a jungler, be able to be effective when you don't have your ultimate. That is just how Tarek is, in my opinion. And you know, I've been having had, having a great time on the PBE testing these out. Gonna be on PBE games or maybe a couple more of them. That's about it. I want to keep it as fast as I can. Those are the current changes I've seen, um, and more to be seen. Tarek jungle is still alive and kicking. Um, and probably, who knows? Is it better than before? Maybe. Who knows? All we have to do is find out. So that's about it. See ya.